Hey there kids, welcome to another video. This is module two, lesson 15. And we don't have any notes today because it's all word problems. Aren't they your favorite? Don't we love word problems? Yep, when I was a kid it was like, no, it's the worst day ever. But we are gonna learn how to get through this so that you don't have to be a struggling student like I was when I was a kid. Anyhow, uh, just word problems, and we're going to be using tape diagrams. The objective is right on the bottom. Solve two-step word problems involving measurement conversions and uh, uh, sometimes more than two steps. So they sure like to make these challenging. Some of them, boy, on the back here, going to be real hard. So let's start reading. Liza's cat had six kittens. Hooray, look at the exclamation mark. When Liza and her brother weighed all the kittens together, they weighed four pounds, two ounces. Since all the kittens are about the same size, about how many ounces does each kitten weigh? So we're gonna be using tape diagrams today to help us find missing information. They are really very helpful tools. So what we do know is that we have four pounds, two ounces, and we have six kittens. So if you make a tape diagram, it's just a box is really what it is. We want six pieces in the box. So if you split it in half, you can have three here and three here. So you have a total of six. Each of these represents one kitten. So the total weight of the kittens, total weight, I always put the total on the top, is gonna be four pounds, two ounces. Four pounds, two ounces, okay? And so now I need to know how many ounces each kitten weighs. So I wanna know what this is right here. Now I know that six is going to be my divisor, but what I don't know is this amount with only one unit. You can't, well we just don't um, split the units. We make everything the same. So what we need to do is we need to convert everything into ounces. So we have to find out how much four pounds would be in ounces. So this is just like a couple of our previous lessons. Four pounds equals how many ounces, okay? So we're gonna take our four, and remember, copy it here, times one pound, that's step one, and then four times the equivalent amount, this is where the change happens, the equivalent amount with your new label. So one pound is equivalent to how many ounces, and this is where you just kinda have to know it. And if you don't know it, use a conversion sheet or look it up. And so this is 16 ounces for uh, one pound. But I have to multiply it by four. So multiply away. Six times four is 24. And four times one is four plus two is six. And that's gonna be our 64 ounces for our four pounds, but that's not all. I still have those two ounces. Don't forget those because they count. And so we have a total of 66 ounces for all of this. So I can put equals 66 ounces. So the kittens all weigh 66 ounces together. Now there are six kittens, so very conveniently, it's 66 divided by six, which equals 11 ounces per kitten. And that's just approximately the kittens weigh 11 ounces each, approximately. Okay, and so there's your answer in a box. Okay, all right, let's move on. Keep moving. All right. Next one, a container of oregano is 17 pounds heavier, not 17 pounds heavy, heavier than a container of peppercorns. Their total weight is 253 pounds. That's a lot of spice, I'm sorry, that's a lot. The peppercorns will be sold in one ounce bags. Okay, so the peppercorns, which we have no idea how much they weigh. How many bags of peppercorns can be made? So the good thing about tape diagrams is that they take a part and try to help you get to the hole. Or maybe they have the hole and you can try to find a part. But what we do know is that we have the two spices. We have the uh, oregano and peppercorns, okay? 
And we know that the oregano is 17 pounds heavier than the peppercorns. So I have mystery number here for peppercorns. And then for oregano, I have the same amount plus 17 pounds. And so I don't know the total pounds and I don't know the total pounds for each one. But together, they weigh 253 pounds. So the strategy that we talk about often is read, draw, write. So when you read it, you should draw something that represents, um, you know, something to help you understand what's happening with the numbers. And so this right here is the same amount. And the only thing I do know is that this is the extra. So let's take our 253, that is the total, for all this together. Take off that little extra 17. Take it off because then I have an equal part, right? So three minus seven we can't do, but don't panic. Just go next door, take one and give 10. Then 13 minus seven is six, four minus one is three, and the two comes down. So 236 pounds is what's left here here. And 236 can then be divided into these two equal pieces. So you can divide 236 into 2 using the standard algorithm. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Multiply, remember, oh, so many people like forget all the steps. This is good that we're reviewing. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And 1 times 2 multiplying on the outside makes 2. Subtract that and we have nothing left over. So bring down the three. Now divide three by two and get one. Okay, and that goes up here above the three. One times two is two. Subtract and get one left. Remember that comparison step, if you have a zero, you just move on. But if you have something left, make sure that this is less than your divisor. Then it is less, so I'm gonna bring down that six. Now I'm dividing 16, the whole thing, by two makes eight. 8 times 2 takes up all 16 of the parts. Finish that out there to get the 0. And then we have 118 that is represented for each part here. So now I know each of these is 118 pounds. Now when I go back and I reread the question for the umpteenth time, because you should always reread these many times, what is it asking us to find out? Does it say, how much does the oregano weigh? No, they hardly even asked about oregano. They went straight to the peppercorns. So the peppercorns is all we really needed to know, and now we have that. And the peppercorns will be sold in one ounce bags. Well, this is pounds, remember. So how many bags of peppercorns can be made? So if we take our 118 pounds and we apply our formula and our approach from uh, lessons uh, 14 and 13, then you have to think about how am I changing pounds to ounces, which one's bigger, which one's smaller? Well, pounds are bigger, ounces are smaller, so we'll have more of these. So use the strategy that we learned. So copy this, 118 times one pound, okay, remember? and then 118 times the equivalent of the new. So one pound is equivalent to 16 ounces, which we reviewed up here. And that means that I have to multiply 118 times 16. Use the standard algorithm. Six times eight is 48, carry the four. Six times one is six plus four is 10. Six times one is six plus one is seven. Hold this spot with a zero because we're done with the ones. We're really in the tens. One times eight is eight, so it's 10 times eight is 80. There it is, keep going. One times one is one, and one times one is one. Add those up, eight comes down, eight comes down. There's another eight, and then that's uh, the one comes down. So what did we get? We got one, eight, eight, eight ounces, 1,888 ounces. Go back to the question and see what we're, they're asking. The peppercorns will be sold in one ounce bags. If this is all the ounces that we have, then each of these would be in a bag. So now you, all you have to do is write your statement that there would be or uh, 1,888 bags uh, at one ounce each can be sold. 
or can be made. Okay, and that's your final, oops, tore my paper. So excited about circling. Uh, there's your answer for number two. Okay, let's do another one on the back. All right. Number three, each costume needs 46 centimeters of red ribbon and three times as much yellow ribbon. What is the total length of ribbon needed for 64 costumes? Express your answer in meters. Oh, thanks, thanks for that. Okay, so we've got centimeters and three times as much, and then let's change it to meters. So we have our conversion and our, our word problem. So they don't really um, need you to take it apart, but you can say there's red and there's yellow and we have our 46 centimeters of red, 46 centimeters, and three times as much yellow. Now this is where the tape diagram comes in really handy because when you're showing the pieces, you can see everything together. Now they didn't say how much yellow ribbon is there. They're saying what is the total length for 64 costumes? Well. If you just find out the total length for one costume, then that will help you on your way. So if I have 46 for one piece, but there are actually four of these, then take your 46 times four and use the standard algorithm to get all the centimeters of ribbon for one costume. Six times four is 24, carry the two. Four times four is 16, plus two is 18 and you end up with 184 centimeters per costume. But that's not the final answer because what is the total length of ribbon for 64 costumes? So I'm gonna take my 184 centimeters and we can multiply it or we can convert it first. It doesn't matter. Students will do it both ways. And since there's no decimal here, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply like I would because uh, if I multiplied with the decimal in there, we pretend it's not there and then we just label. So I'm going to leave it here and then we'll convert at the end. 4 times 4, 16 carry the 1. 4 times 8, 32 plus 1 is 33. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 3 is 7. Done with the 4, hold that 0. Now I'm in the tens place. 6 times 4 is 24 carry the 2. 6 times 8 is 48 plus 2 is 50 carry the 5. And then 6 times 1 is 6 plus 5 is 11. Bring this down by adding everything together. Remember, six, seven, seven, one, one. These are centimeters. I have to convert centimeters to meters. Thanks so much for this multi-step problem. Now, in this one, you can go ahead and go through the whole uh, procedure and do the conversion, okay? But some of you guys are gonna get the hang of it right away and you're saying, ooh, ooh, I know that when I use my, uh, my chart and I'm changing from centimeters to meters, that's from here to here, from centimeters to meters in the ones place. Thank you for focusing. Thank you, iPad. And so that's only a two position shift, okay? So look, I have these right here, Hun times 100 from here to centimeters, okay? If you're changing from meters to centimeters or times by one one hundredth if you're changing from uh, the smaller to the larger unit, which is what we're doing here. So, oops, now it's out of focus. Oh, thank you for focusing again. Oh, all right, one one seven seven six, and this would be times one centimeter. Make the change here, one one seven seven six times what? One centimeter is one one hundredth of a meter. And so if you already knew this, kids are already getting to the point where they're like, I know what to multiply by. And so that's always exciting. Um, so if you're gonna multiply by one one hundredth, I need less of the larger unit. It would be 117.76 meters of ribbon for all 64 costumes. There you go. Okay. Oh, and click subscribe. Come back again, and hopefully you'll enjoy more math videos. We love math. This is our favorite thing. Okay. When making a batch of orange juice for her basketball team, Jackie used five times as much water as concentrate. 
there were 32 more cups of water than concentrate. So this is like the introduction. Question A, how much juice did she make in all? Why don't we use a tape diagram to show how much water and concentrate there is? So let's say we've got um, five times as much water as concentrate. I've got one part concentrate and five times that. Four, five, not the best boxes I've ever made, but we will survive. So whatever this is, she's got five times as much water as concentrate. There were 32 more cups of water than concentrate. They're telling you this right here, this is the more part, okay, right here. This part is more than this. This is equal. This is more. So it's learning how to use these words is really important. They're telling you that this is 32 cups. So they just gave you an amount. And I hope you're seeing that now that you know that this whole amount, these four parts make up 32, that you're saying, hmm, what can I do with this to get an amount for each of these? And you're saying, I could divide them. And I would say, you're right. 32 divided by four parts would make eight in each part. And so now, all of a sudden, if this, these are all the same, remember, if this is eight, and this is eight, and this is eight, and this is eight, then this is eight, and this is eight as well. And so how much juice does she have in all? It's simply one, two, three, four, five, six, six boxes times, well, and I'll do it in standard, uh, like the book does now, six times eight equals 48 cups of juice. And so how much juice did she make in all? She made 48 cups because we know the ratio was five to one. Now we know that this is the extra, eight cups in each, okay? But we're not done yet. B, she poured the juice into quart containers. So I've got 48 cups of juice. I have to use this answer in my next step. How many containers could she fill? Okay, so if she has quart containers but 48 cups of juice, that's a lot. We have to divide it up. So let's take our 48 cups and find out how many quarts we can fill with that, okay? So use your conversion method. 48 times one cup, of course, would make 48 cups. Take your 48, make the change. What is one cup when talking about quarts? Well, one cup is one-fourth of a quart. This is just like, I think it's less than 14. Okay, we're using a fraction to determine what, what our factor should be, our conversion factor. So on this one, remember when you set it up and it's 48 as a whole number, so it's over one, it would be 48 over four because 48 times one is 48 and one times four is four. So now that I have this 48 divided by four, remember the division bar, this fraction bar is a division sign, it's 48 divided by 4, which is 12. And so now you can label your quart containers. Oops, contain, contain, hers. 12 quart containers can be filled. There you go. Easy peasy. I hope this is so helpful. And come back again for another video. Bye for now.